Social media can be such a powerful marketing tool for companies. This pinball machine sitting in my house is the perfect example of that. I don't even like pinball, and I still ended up with an At Games Legends pinball machine thanks to the constant reinforcement from Reddit and Facebook. If you've been following the home arcade circle lately, you've probably noticed that the digital pinball revolution has become all the rage during the COVID-19 pandemic. Continuing that heavyweight battle first initiated through cabinets, both Arcade 1-Up and Ad Games have released their versions of what an affordable pinball machine is to the public, and they're in like a high demand right now. Both companies have had difficulties actually keeping these tables in stock. And after seeing all the R Arcade 1 Up and R Legends Ultimate posts reenacting Christmas morning with their shiny new pinball tables, I jumped at the chance to get on board Wave 9. So, what's Legends Pinball all about? Let's find out. Digital pinball machines aren't necessarily a new fad. Various companies have. I guess you can say attempted to make pinball more accessible by merging games into a digital platform. The problem was that those digital tables were sold at prices near what a used classic bar table would cost to be acquired. At Games' solution, however, was to sell their machines at around $800. For comparison, Arcade One Up sells their three license tables at an MSRP of $549. Whereas Arcade 1UP curates games by theme per table, Legends Pinball comes with 22 classic tables from the classic gaming company originating from the roaring 1920s, Gottlieb. The promotion I purchased is called Pinball Plus, which at games actually also provides buyers with a redeemable code for four DLC volumes of Zykaria tables. This brings the total table count up to 127 licensed classic tables. While many of these tables are simply variational remakes, thus allowing for some repetitional gameplay, this is still a bunch of games to practice at home with. As with the Legends Ultimate Cabinet, the best reason to go with at games is that the gaming library is always expanding. Just recently, a new set of tables from Taito was actually just added for purchase on the eStore. The possibilities are endless for how far official support can go for this table. To download additional games, all you have to do is use a thumb drive and go through the Flash Drive X setup. Of course, you also have to purchase it prior to doing this. It's that simple. And just like the Legends Ultimate, the Legends Pinball has an HDMI port and two USB-A ports for accessories. You can connect the table to the internet with Wi-Fi and Ethernet to compete to reach the top of the weekly leaderboards. Internet connection is also essential for the At Games ArcadeNet platform, which I kind of did talk about with my Legends Ultimate review. Finally, there's also Bluetooth support, which isn't always a given for a device of this structure. Pinball, like many other cabinet arcade type games, requires significant practice to utilize the, the hardware. There needs to be a physical relationship with the unit in order for a player to succeed in obtaining a high score. Those people who understand that will be glad to hear that the Legends Pinball Table has tactile feedback and accelerometers to enhance the simulation of a real pinball table. If you've seen a pro player take on a pinball table, you've probably seen quite the hammering and thundering of hardware shifting weight left and right, front and back. Physically forcing or kicking the machine is as much a part of pinball as hitting the flippers. It's a difficult task that requires extensive knowledge of when to utilize that nudging effect to add more, I guess you could say, oomph on your ball strikes. Doing so too often in succession will lock the table up into an automatic game over. For casual players like myself, this aspect of pinball has always thrown me in for a loop. It's very difficult to master. Since this is a digital replication of pinball, At Games has included a left, a right, and a front nudge button to make shaking the table accessible without actually having to physically shake the table. Even I personally don't feel quite right doing it like that, but it is easier to access for newbies. Practicing at a bar or a cake would cost me quite a few dollars when it was all said and done. I can honestly say, 
that my nudging game has improved significantly with the unlimited repetitions thanks to this Legends Ultimate machine. While I wouldn't say that the digital simulation of pinball truly replicates a physical classic table with an actual physical ball, I am quite impressed overall with the sound and feel of the gameplay. Latency with any kind of digital display can make or break a user experience. Nudging actually seems quite close to the real-time thing to the naked eye. There is a slight delay, but nothing too substantial to influence your casual play. You can see this messing around with the plunger as well. Such a near-absent delay surprised me tremendously. Once again, the pinball fad was a little before my time, so I didn't really have the same amount of exposure around pinball machines as I did arcade cabinets. My baby boomer father, however, spent most of his formidable youth at diners, banging on pinball tables with his brothers and friends trying to set high scores. When I had him test the Legends pinball out, his eyes lit up and he felt right at home. While he did complain that this wasn't a real table and that the depth was throwing him off, I'll talk about that in a second, I could still tell he was right back into the zone the minute his fingers touched those switches. I think what really wins some of the old timers over eventually is the mammoth size 32 inch LCD display. It's so good. It's full HD and pushes 60 frames per second across the vast playfield. That's an automatic win over the much smaller and lower resolution arcade one up units. Pixel density really plays an important factor when it comes to replicating something that wasn't digital before. Pinball wasn't digital before. While there isn't a 4K consumer table to my knowledge, this display is the cream of the crop at the moment. Pinball aesthetics also relies on another vital display board. Thankfully, At Games didn't skimp out here as well as there is a second 15.6 inch LCD back glass that houses graphics and scoreboards. If the playfield is the main attraction, then the back glass is the eye candy. This really exemplifies how to translate pinball to the digital age using technology. I love the back glass and everything it brings to the table. I'm even okay with the At Games logo placed directly below it with two front firing speakers targeted right at my eye line. The Legends pinball machine nails the classic table look right down to a T. While the panel art is essentially a mishmash of like Gottlieb properties that reminds me of like a 1950s comic strip, I personally enjoy admiring the retro feel that the unit exudes. It's a, a bit of an art piece as much as it is a gaming console. Constructed from the same type of wood as the Legends Ultimate and supported by aluminum legs, I'm actually quite satisfied with the overall build quality when fully put together. The whole process only took me about like 30 minutes and it was just as easy as building IKEA furniture. I said the same thing about the Legends Ultimate cabinet. Here is, however, where a couple annoying issues with the quality control reared its ugly head up. While not necessarily a problem, Ad Games ships the unit in two separate boxes, one large one containing the play field and a smaller one containing the back glass. The strange thing, is that they're shipped separately and arrived during different times through different delivery services. That is bizarre to me. To further muddy the process, At Games only supplied me, at least, and probably you, with only one tracking number. In my case, I received the back glass first and the tracking claim the delivery was completed. I was aware that it came in two boxes, but I expected them to be delivered at about the same time, or actually at the same time together. To my relief, however, a, di a different freight service arrived the next day with the other half of the unit. This could be quite frustrating to the uninitiated. Fortunately, those fomented social media groups I'm a part of did give me some, uh, you know, a little bit of a heads up on what to look for because a lot of you guys out there have experienced that as well. So I'm just passing this information on. Don't freak out if you only get one box. The next issue I had was a cracked CTR board. It's not the most noticeable thing, but it is there on a brand new table. I emailed At Games and two months later, they're still working on getting a replacement part out to me. Their support system, while responsive, takes a very long time to get back to you with any type of information. Be prepared for things to drag out for weeks if you need support help. Speaking of the CTR board, I'm not a fan of the layout to navigate around the interface. There's a single D-pad occupying the CTR board with the logo accompanying it in a pseudo coin slot area, which I do think is kind of cool. 
uh, Act Games has a start and menu button. On the right side is the plunger, and on the left side of the coin slot is the front nudge button with a rewind back button next to it. To get around to things on this interface requires two hands on different spectrums of the machine. One hand needs to be used to scroll along through the D-pad, while the other hand is kind of like bent around on your pelvis area where you uh, press the start button and oftentimes you press the rewind button to go back. This is such an awkward button layout that it's just uncomfortable. I've seen modders add joysticks and buttons next to the D-pad and quite honestly that should have been what the default natural spot of your navigation stuff should have been. It may not have looked as clean aesthetically but it would probably have been better ergonomically for us players. As far as the variety of tables are concerned, there are handfuls of tables that are really fun to sink your time into. Lita and I, in particular, we compete with one another on what has become one of our favorite, favorite go-to matchups on the 1980s Sakaria table, Star God. Star God, they're trying, <laughs> the trying quests along with the overpasses and tunnels make for quite a classic 80s table experience that even I have some kind of recollection playing during my childhood. Some of the older classics are so much more difficult though due to the wide gaps between the flippers. Many of the older games also don't have kickbacks or ball saves, which makes it significantly more challenging to keep those three balls in play for longer than five minutes. If it was an arcade, I would lo have lost so much money by now. <laughs> for someone who doesn't really have an affinity for pinball in general, though, I've actually accumulated just about, if not more hours here than I have on my Legends arcade cabinet. Like, that's a bit surprising to me, and the reason as to why I think that has transpired is... Do the ease of getting into a game of pinball in general. There's something about just jumping into a quick game and after losing your three balls down the drain, you can get back to whatever you were doing and then eventually just jump back into a, a, a new game on the machine later on. It's, it's that simple. Like with the Legends Ultimate, whoever has come to visit us since we've acquired these two Act Games machines, man, they, they end up leaving the house just a teeny bit happier and a whole lot more nostalgic. And for me, that's, that's totally worth the price of entry. So the other day, I was on a Zoom call at work, and I just dropped everything I was saying, and I told them, subscribe.